Howdy, this is Denise Vidoc, and I am a Microsoft Certified Trainer, and I am also a OneNote and Digital Planning Enthusiast. And I've got a video for you today on how I take my Google Calendar, and through a couple of steps, I actually take it and import it into my OneNote for my digital planning. So let's get started. Um, first of all, if you need some inspiration on using OneNote as a bullet journal, you can follow us on Facebook. I'm a member of a group. It's called um, the OneNote Bullet Journal, and it's owned by Mich Michelle Christensen. And um, we've got a lot of uh, everybody posts in here, and it's just a great place to get some inspiration. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Google Calendar just to show you, and I've got it just in a um, two-week layout right now, but I can I can look at it by the month, and it's really busy, but I probably don't want to go through all that right now. Um, I have different calendars set up. I've got a like my main personal one. I've got a separate one for bills, and I just have it green, and I've got birthdays that are uh, pink, but the colors don't really matter here. Um, I've got when I do my trainings and reminders and everything on here. So you set up your Google Calendar however you want. And to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an app, or it's a website. It's called printmycal.com. So when you come in here, the first thing you're going to need to do is sign in with your Google account to make sure that you're using the right one. And um, you can save the information. So once you've already done it you don't have to keep you know physically signing in the next step is to pick your layout you can come in and you can say that you want to do it letter size you can pick the size and you can do a portrait layout or a landscape it's personal preference you can mess with your margins and you can decide if you want it to start on Monday or if you want it to start on Sunday or if you have a different work week and you want to start it on a different day, you, you do it however you feel like it. You can change the title font and the and the fonts for the day and everything here. You just click on it and it's got a few to choose from. And you can choose a color and you can choose a size, bold, whatever, and save it. Um, but that's not really going to matter because once we have it from here, we're going to import it into Word, do all our manipulation there. So you don't have to do a lot of the setup here. The next step is to pick the calendars that you want to show. Um, like for instance, I've just got my personal calendar, I've got my bills, I've got my birthdays and anniversaries, um, and I've got my training and stuff on here. So these are the different options. And then you can, this is a preview that will show you what the day is gonna look like. So like here I've got AM and PM, or you can choose to just use A and P if you want to do that, or if you want to use military time, use a 24-hour format, you've got those options here. You can say no indent on the calendar appointments, or you can specify how far. I just usually indent to the first line, and you can align all the events, and you've got different options here as well. So the next, um, the next step is to download the file, and you can choose the uh, month. I'm going to choose August. This is the month that I'm in right now. And I click prepare calendar. And I've got, I can open it as a PDF file or I can download the RTF. And the RTF will allow you to take it into Word to manipulate it even further. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to save that. Um, let's just save it. And once it's finished loading, I can click on it and it will open in Word and I will enable editing. Okay, so now I've got my calendar in here and it is still in the RTF and you see the compatibility mode. So usually what I do just to start off with is I hit my file and convert and that will convert it to the newest format, which is your DOCX. And once you save it, you'll see the, the name will change at the top. If, if you want to save it. So now that you've got it here, you can start manipulating. You can, if you wanted to, you can merge your cells. You can go to um, your layout and merge cells. 
but it's not really going to matter because once we copy and paste this into OneNote, um, they're not going to be merged anyway. So you don't have to spend a lot of time doing that. So I'm going to, let's, let's just, I'm going to pick a purple theme here so that I can use these colors. I'm going to come in here and, and again, this part here you can do in, um, you can do it in OneNote, but if you have a theme that you're wanting to use specific colors, I suggest doing your setup here in Word first. So um, I'm going to do my shading and let's just, uh, let's pick do a light enough purple where you can read it. Okay. Um, and I can come in here and I can I can shade this as a let's do bright blue. And the same thing I can do down here. Um, now here's here's the fun part and I don't worry about the title at the top because I'm not going to copy that part. Um, you can change your you know However you want to do it, personal preference, you can change your fonts. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the um, the date right here. And now I'm going to click over here over on the editing on the home tab here and click select. Select all text with similar formatting, which it's going to select all the dates. So now I could say that I want all the dates to be like a dark purple. And I want them to be, let's do 12, 12 point, and I'll just pick, we'll just pick one. Um, so that way you can manipulate everything all at one time. Um, same thing here, uh, select all text with the similar, and that's going to select everything that's in bold. So I can make that, um, let's make everything 10 point. And I'm going to do the same thing here, 10 point, and you get the idea. So I could click on, um, make sure I've just got one selected. And I'm, let's say I want to make that one, you know, we'll pick a different font for that one as well, make it bigger. Um, let's do the bills. Now we can leave the bills small. We'll leave them like they are. Um, I, if you looked at my calendar, you can see that I use a lot of emoji, or I don't, emojis, I guess, because um, I like visual. So I've got all these little icons and everything on here, but for some reason when they come over, um, when you do it, when you do the import, they're, they're not in here like they should be. So, um, you can select on them, and if you're like you're like me, just do Control H, which brings up your Find and Replace, and it will have the symbol in there already. And you can click on Replace with, and use your touch keyboard. And so this is a um, this is a meal, and I usually use this little icon. So if I click on that in the Replace with. And I say replace all, it replaces everything in the calendar. So if you've got events that repeat, you can do that. So um, let's do the gym. I'm just, I'll pick a little tennis shoe that I use. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but you get the idea. Um, you can make any other changes that you want to make in here before you do the um, import. But when you're in the, this is basically all it is, is just a table. So this little icon here at the top, this little uh, four-sided arrow, I'm just going to click on that and it selects the whole table. I'm going to do control C to copy. And then let's go back in here to, um, to OneNote. And I'm using the OneNote app on um, Windows 10. And um, so I'm going to hit down here at the bottom. I'm going to add a new page. I'm just going to say August 2018. And the date and time that come up here, this is the date the page is created. I usually don't have those on there. So 
I can just click those off. Now I'm going to hit Control V to paste. Give it a second, it'll come through. I feel like I ought to have the Jeopardy music playing. Sing along. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay, so when it comes in, um, it does not keep the spacing and everything that, that you would have had in Word. So the first thing I usually do is grab on the placeholder and drag it out so that it's a little bit wider. And you can see the cells are not evenly spaced and there is no cell spacing. I mean, you can't set a specific spacing in, um, in OneNote. So sometimes what I do is I will go back to my calendar and I will use the snipping tool. And if you don't have this one, on your toolbar like I do, you need to get it because I use it all the time. So you can just hit your Windows key and start typing, you know, snipping, S-N-I-P. And when you see it up there, you can, uh, you can click on it and you can uh, save it to your toolbar. So I'm going to just say new. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, well, let's do, let me do another row that has something. Um, I'm going to just select this row here. And I want to make sure that I get, you know, my outside borders. And so what I'm going to do is uh, that copies this to the clipboard. And so I'm going to go back into OneNote down here at the bottom. And I'm just going to paste that in there and drag it out to about the size that I have everything else. So now I've kind of got a template where I can just kind of eyeball this and, and move my borders where I want them to be. Move this up a little bit. I can use my Alt key to do micro adjustments. Bring this one out. Bring that one in. Adjust that one a little bit. Okay, now when you've got it adjusted to the size that you want, you can come in here and you can just delete that out. And then so now you've got your table in here and you can just start working with it however you see fit. Um, your row height, there is no row adjustment. So if I come in between the rows, you'll see there's nothing here. But what I can do is at the end of my um, my longest day, let's come over here. If I need to make this row bigger, I can just add a couple of uh, carriage returns here. I'm going to add a couple here, add one there. And that just makes your, your cells bigger. And then you can come in and you can start embellishing it however you want. If you wanted to um, click in here and you can insert an image. It's not Tuesday, but you get the idea. Um, so if you put if you put an image in a bot in a cell, it is only going to be as wide as that you've already set the column widths for. I can click on this and um, let's go back to the and I can make that centered. You can do whatever. But a lot of times, what I like to do is I like to click outside of the table. And I can insert a picture, or let's just do a sticker. Let's do a sticker. And uh, we'll pick one from over here. Let's pick this little guy. And we're going to change this, and we're going to say vacation. So now he's out here in his, in his own little box. And now I can drag it on top and put it wherever I want to put it. Resize it. And... So, and it's, um, the background is transparent, so you can move it around to fit. 
you need to, you can kind of stretch it out a little bit, whatever you want to do. But as long as you're outside the table, it's easy to, um, to add pictures. These, are, these come in really big. So resize, do whatever you're going to do, and then, then you can drag it in wherever you want to put it. Um, if you want to shade your weekends, you know, you can come in here, go to table, shading, and you can pick a color. If you don't like any of these colors, which is your standard office theme, then you can come into more colors and let's just look for a yellow and we'll do a light yellow. And um, so you can highlight your weekends and you can do whatever you're going to do and you can make this your own. If you want to come in here and um, if you want to put something that's going to cover both of these, have any long ones. Let's take this one. So I'm just going to, I'm going to, again, I'm going to use my alt key to kind of fill in the spot there. Drag it to where it needs to be. And I'll adjust it. And if you are using the OneNote app, and you don't um, you don't have a way to crop an image. You can you can take your image and you can go back to Word. Let's do a new one, and you can pop it in here, and you can crop it from here. So let's, let's say we wanted to crop it that way. Then you can copy it. get rid of that one. And always remember to be outside the cells when you paste it in. So then you can paste it. So just because you don't have a crop in this in this particular app doesn't mean you can't use it. And if you're using the desktop version of OneNote, you will be able to crop if you use um, if you use OneTastic add-in. And uh, there is an add-in that you can get for the OneNote app, which is the OneNote Gem. And uh, it will have the crop feature as well. So, um, so it looks like this is filled in up here. But if you um, if you manipulate it, if you add uh, other things to your um, if you add rows, of course it's going to change, and your images are going to move around. So you'll have to remember that. So if you come in and um, you're coming in in here and you're adding information here just be aware that things will move around so once you have once you've got everything in here the way you want it to be now you've got to start on doing if you're working on a weekly layout you can just come in here and you can select a, a week and you can copy it you can start a new page and this is your weekly layout You can start it in here, and then you can start manipulating it however you want to do it. So that is how I use some of the what I call helper apps. So I've got printmycal.com. I take it into Word, make it look how I want to look it, bring it back into OneNote, and then start manipulating it and making it my own. So that's... What I have for you, if you have any questions, you can leave them down below and I will answer them as soon as I can. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate your time. Y'all take care.